everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Sean Rolla. So 10% of Americans are addicted to drugs and alcohol, and 90% of them don't get the treatment they desperately need. Now, I think the problem is that the 90% is so high because we're so focused on the wrong things. We're focused on cutting drug flow into the country, and I think that's causing more of a problem, actually, because you are, you know, cutting the drug supply, but this is not going to stop addicts from getting the drug. The addicts are just going to go out and create more violence. They will kill to get the drug. They're addicted. And I don't think people can comprehend what addiction is because they will literally kill for it. So I think, you know, focusing on cutting the drug flow is not the, is not the right solution. And the other problem is that, um, you know, we've stigmatized uh, how we view drug addicts. We, you know, associate them with bad people. We throw them in prison. We take away their jobs. We give them no way to, you know, make it in the world so they turn to drugs. And what I believe the solution is, is to um, you know, reconnect addicts with society, uh, give them a reason to live, show them the light at the end of the tunnel because uh, addiction is such a dark place to be in for them. So I truly believe we should be reconnecting them rather than you know, punishing them. And so this got me thinking about how can I make a project of this? How can I get myself involved and get my foot in the door uh, in a project or in a topics as big as um, drug addiction. So I decided I wanted to stick with the education piece. I wanted to educate people on the chemistry involved. So that's what led me to my project. I um, made chemistry videos for the students to watch and they could learn how to do chemistry problems. I you know, would summarize them. They, would, they could go on the videos and, and watch them and learn how to do it. And I got my inspiration on how to do them by, through my community connection. I volunteered, or not volunteered, I job shadowed two days at Pembroke Academy with the chemistry teacher and I learned that the students learn best through visual learning. So I applied this to uh, my videos and I just, you know, had a whiteboard and markers and I was just drawing the equations out and, you know, the shapes and everything. Uh, and so I posted them on YouTube and I had seven videos, uh, each, each one was about ten minutes long. and. To test the success of them, I had the AP Chem students take, them, uh, take a quiz I made. I had half of the students watch the videos and half of them not. And what I found was that the ones that watched the videos did better on the quiz I made than the ones that didn't. So how this relates to um, my project is uh, chemistry, this is hydrocarbons. And um, when, if you can understand hydrocarbons, you understand how you know, things start to bond in the brain. So you have these two molecules, which look very similar, the only difference are the hydroxide ions on the left one. And the left one is dopamine. Dopamine is what uh, is a neurotransmitter in the brain, found um, naturally in the brain, and it controls pleasure, attention, motivation, it uh, gives you joy and happiness. It's basically essential for survival. If you didn't have it, you'd feel trapped, lost, depressed. So, you know, you have such a great molecule that you, you need to survive, and then the one on the right is methamphetamine. So methamphetamine is a, a drug that you can become addicted to. It leads to memory loss, violent behavior, uh, psychosis, and you know, what's interesting is how close they, they, they look. They, their shapes are relatively the same. So what happens is that in the brain there are these things called dopamine receptors, and what usually happens is dopamine bonds onto them. And they, it fits like a puzzle. So it, it's, it's balanced in the brain, but when you introduce methamphetamine, methamphetamine, because of its shape, just bonds like a puzzle into the dopamine receptor. So now there is an imbalance in dopamine in the brain, which is what causes high, high um, like senses of pleasure and uh, euphoric feelings, which is what gives you a meth high. So once the meth is, has left the system, you're now left with a low level of dopamine because the brain is saying there's too much dopamine so we have to stop producing it. So now you're left with depressed thoughts. That's why uh, this, this is what starts to lead to addiction. So there are three parts uh, of the brain that are related to this. There's the uh, midbrain which is what controls dopamine and uh, what produces it and this then flows to the striatum. The striatum is what controls motivation and to pursue goals. And the last part is the prefrontal cortex, which um, is what's responsible for judgment and uh, decision-making. 
and strategizing on how to get the drug. So, you know, to apply it to this table, you know, once you've taken meth or any type of drug, you're, you're now at a low. And the trigger is when you see the drug. So now you have, you have this thing called temporal lobe, and when you, it's associated with memory. So when you see the drug, you remember the happy feeling associated with meth. So now you're thinking about meth, and dopamine gets released from the midbrain and sent to the striatum. So the striatum is activated, and the, like I said, the striatum is responsible for uh, motivation. So now you're getting motivated to get this drug, you're visualizing it. So you're intensifying this craving for it until you're so focused on the drug, you go out and get it. So you get high, and then your level of dopamine drops back down. And this repetition of drug use is what leads to addiction. So how do we fix, how do we solve addiction? You know, your, your brain has sophisticated itself, making a sophisticated brain network to go from point A to point B. Point A being you see the drug and then you go get it. So how do we rewire the brain so that people are no longer dependent on the drug? Well, there are many types of ways and, and what has worked are, is reconnecting people. So behavioral therapy, uh, group therapy, there's medication, which is sometimes essential. You know, you have a heroin addict that uh, the withdrawals are so bad, you need methadone, which is a medication used to um, uh, d distract you. You don't get the uh, withdrawals from heroin, so you don't go back to heroin. So in combination with medication and behavioral therapy is actually the most uh, effective way to be treat or be addiction. So there are a lot of treatments out there and there's this one behavioral therapy that found that 73% of addicts would complete this program and 21% remain sober after five years. And I think 21% is a very significant minority. You have one in five addicts, you know, we're talking heroin addicts that are no longer using heroin because they complete this program. And what's working for these, these programs is um, uh, they, they are giving these people goals to set and they're, you know, showing them the light at the end of the tunnel. They're giving them a reason to live now. So they no longer have to turn to drugs and they're, you know, rewiring their brain to think that they can live without it because once you're addicted, you think you need the drug, but that's, that's not the case. You can rewire the brain to um, live without it anymore. So my main message is that we need to be open arms and connecting with society and not punishing these people. Um, and the only way to fight drug addiction the, and to fight the war on drugs is to actually be open-minded and accepting of these people and to not shoo them away and punish them and throw them in prison. I, I think that, you know, reconnection is the only way we can solve this problem. Thank you. I would like to thank Ms. Mitchell. She was my mentor. She helped me make the videos and design them. Uh, we communicated all summer of figuring out how we were going to present the videos and how we were going to test it and everything. Uh, I'd like to thank Ms. Dawson, who is my senior STEM teacher. I was communicating with her all summer, asking her all these questions. Um, Ms. Mueller uh, is the chemistry teacher at Pembroke that I job shadowed for two days, so uh, thank you, Ms. Mueller. Um, and I'd like to thank the AP Chem students that helped, uh, that let me go into their class, and I took the t I had them take the test, so it helped me, you know, see if my project was actually successful. And thank you, Dr. Kevin Hill, who was uh, the person I interviewed over the phone, uh, which uh, you need to interview to get uh, all these sources, and he was one of the people I interviewed, so thank you.